my tips. Welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, we're going to continue our introduction to Azure DevOps series. And in this video, we're going to finish the section regarding the Azure boards because we have the last topics in there. So we're going to be covering the work item queries. We're also going to cover the delivery plans and we're going to also talk about the analytics views. So let's get started started with it and the first thing is with the work item queries this section allows you to retrieve work items based on specific conditions so this is excellent to use if you have a lot of work items in your backlog things that you have completed and things that you have planned and uh, you want to kind of narrow it down to see things that are only related to a specific thing so you can use this to narrow it down and have an easier view of the things that you actually care about and the good thing is that you can create a, a query and then you can save it. So you don't have to rewrite that query again if you need to see it again. You just save it. And you can also share that query that you create with other team members. So you can pass them, for example, a URL that they can access and then they immediately get to that uh, query that you created and the results. Or you can actually send it in an email too. So it's very useful. It's, it's a way to organize yourself and, and find the needle in the haystack, basically, if you have a lot of work items in your organization. So that's it for the work item queries. Uh, the next thing we're going to be talking about is the delivery plans. The delivery plans basically provides you a graphical timeline of deliveries that you have planned. So you would see a timeline, and in that timeline, you will see divisions based on sprints. And you'll see the items that have been planned to be delivered in the specific sprints. But you could also have items that span multiple sprints. For example, an epic or a feature might span more than one sprint. And you can see that clearly in the timeline too. It's very good because it gives you a bird's eye view of the planned work that you have of up to 20 teams at the same time in a view. So... It is really good for management. It's a tool that allows them to see the, the progress and the planning that is uh, already been done. And they can see if something's falling behind or, or you know, they can make changes to that plan of deliveries in, in a really nice and clean uh, view. And uh, it allows you to view the work items at different levels too. So you can see it at the epic level, you can see it at the features level, or you can see it down to the story level. So that's the delivery plans. And uh, the last thing that we would talk about is the analytics views. And this allows you basically to create Power BI reports of work items, so only work items. And uh, it allows you to filter those uh, work items using different criteria. And once you create a view in the Azure DevOps platform, then you can use a Power BI data connector to connect to that view and visualize that data in a Power BI dashboard, however you want. So that's the last three items that we're going to be talking about. So let's get to the boards, the Azure DevOps and see the things in action. Okay, so we are in our Azure DevOps platform. As you can see, I've made some minor changes here to the stories to show um, different names, etc. And we're gonna go into the queries section here under the boards and we don't have anything right now. So we're going to create our first query here. Uh, let's first go into the work items to see how we can filter stuff out. For example, we can filter with uh, the status of things, the sprints of things, the names of things. So that's why I have several keywords here. For example, books, catalog, and uh, display and stuff like that we could use that so when we go into queries the first thing we're going to do is we have the option to actually import work items but we're not going to do that so we're just going to go into new query here and in here is where we specify all the specific parameters for our search of work items we can add and remove them here so for example here it starts saying you know a change date is uh, in the future basically i don't want that and here we have, for example, by the type of work item, and we can say here, for example, with the operator equals, that we only want to see, I don't know, say bugs, right? In here we also have something that says, and also, not only that it's a bug, but that its state is currently equal to, and then we can pick a state here. 
So I believe our bug was in the status of new. So let's do that and then run the query to see if we can find the bug. So we press the run query and as you can see out of all the work items that we have it found our bug that is on the new state. And we can do this with other things. For example, we can change this to uh, epics and then we run the query again and we have our epic. And if we go, for example, to stories instead, user story, and then we run this, then we'll see all of our user stories. So you have a lot of flexibility here to add different classes and uh, find the things that you need based on a lot of different options that you have here. The title, for example, could contain a specific word. So if we say I want something that the title says book and it's new, notice that we did not get any results in this case, but we saw some more items that had the word book in their title. Watch out, you have to be careful with the operator. Remember, the title was not only the word book, it had all the things. So we have to change this to contains the word book. And then when we run the query again, then we'll find all the things that contain the word book in the title and which has a state of new. So you have a lot of ways to filter all the information in your work items to see work items that are relevant to some conditions that you want. So this is what we wanted to see here. This is the, the main use, honestly, of the queries that we have in Azure DevOps. Now, we're in the editor view, so this is what allows us to edit the filter, the filter, right? But if we go into the results, we can see all the results that we had on the bottom here. And then on the right side panel, when we select one of those, then we can see the details here of that item. So that also allows us to look inside the results to see what we're looking at. And if we save, uh, query then we can actually see charts right now I haven't saved anything so it says that charting is disabled so you can go back into the editor and if you have a query that you know you're gonna use in the future again you can basically click the save button here and then give it a name let's just give it this name for now and you can organize your queries into folders too so and then you click save and then once you do that then you should be able to go when you go into queries see your saved query here and when you click on it it'll take you to that query and that result and you can edit it too if you want another thing that we mentioned in the slides is that if i create a query and i find that this is useful for someone and i want to share it there's several ways to do it you can click here where it says copy query url it gives you the url you can just give this url to someone and then they can put it in their browser and it'll take them directly to here to see the results of that query or you can click the email query button, then you can pick someone in your organization. You can put a note here about the query that you're sending to them and uh, they'll see this information. So it's, it's very useful also, you can share it that way. And as usual, we can always uh, make changes to how we see things here. We can add columns, remove columns. So that's uh, typical, usual for us. You can also start a new query by going into the new button and selecting new query. So that's very useful here. Also, basically the main things that you can see here, you can rename the query if you want, if you have already saved it. So that's an option that you have there. And once you have it saved, then you should be able to see shards when things have happened here with your different uh, results from the query. So you can create shards here and visualize that. The next thing that we're gonna cover is the delivery plans. As we mentioned, this is a way for us to clearly see like a bird's eye view of what we have planned for our team, our, our project. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to create a new plan. We can go here in the top right or just click here. And then we, you can just create uh, a plan with any name. Let's just call this one test plan. And then you have to pick here the team, the project, and the backlog. How do you want to see the, the backlog displayed in the graph? You can go, like we said, by levels of epics, features, and stories. So it depends on what you want to see. You can pick here. You can always change this. So you can pick whatever. Let's just pick epics for now. Remember that I said that you can add up to 20 teams in this view. So if you had more teams, you can come here and pick it. But I don't have another team, so I'm just going to leave it as one. And with this, we can just say create and then we'll get our timeline of plant work. In this case, we're looking at the epics, so that's why we only see one sprint and one epic there. 
but the reality is that there's more stuff so we can always see it in another level so if i go into the settings and i go into teams i can change this for example the features level and save and then it'll switch to the features and as you can see we have four sprints but we're only seeing one feature because we haven't really defined the epics and the features here when it comes to the timeline so let's switch that to the story level and see how it looks and save it and now you can see more of a coherent thing right so in this case we have uh, in a sprint one, a story that said that we wanted to deliver the display of a table of books that are available in the store. So, so that was supposed to be done in the weeks of January 1st to January 12th. And then in the second sprint that started on the 15th and ended on the 26th, we wanted to display book details. And that was what was going to be delivered. And in the third sprint, we wanted to display book reviews, for example. So that was from January 29th to February the 9th. And look at this, we're at the end of this sprint, and then for the next sprint, we have planned to allow to filter the catalog by category or genre. So you can see the whole timeline from the past to the future and where you are right now in that timeline. And if you had more teams, you would see this at like another swim lane here for the other teams. So if you have more teams, you would see more swim lanes here that represent the other teams. So this is great for management. They can see what has been delivered if something spans more than one sprint, that is also very good for them to know because then they can know, you know, this wasn't planned properly. It should have been broken down maybe into different parts. And you can also see, you know, how is the use of your time and your teams when it comes to deploying and delivering results for the business. So that's basically it for the delivery plan. It's just a, a way to view, like a bird's eye view of the work that is done and planned to be done in the future. So that's basically it for this time. But since I only have one team, I wanna show you how it would look if you had more than one team. So let's go into the Microsoft documentation. And in this case, for example, if we had one, two, three, four teams, you would see it like this, one lane per team with all the things that they have delivered in the sprints. And the sprints, it depends on how you make them. So this is basically by month and year, or it could be by sprint name or some other thing. But this is how it would look if you had more than one team. And this is really nice because uh, in my case, I didn't have anything that spanned more than one sprint. But in this view, you can see, for example, the features that took more than one sprint to be delivered. For example, the delivery plans 2.0 here, it took three sprints to be delivered. And you can see that it was worked on for those three sprints, right? So it's really good for management to see clearly what was being done etc and that also helps the teams to show what kind of things they were working on and what they were doing so that's the advantage of the delivery plan so now the last thing that we would want to cover because the delivery plans and the analytics views are new things that were recently added and if you click on analytics view at least for me i don't have an option here to do anything but the documentation gives us an example of what you can do with this basically it tells us that it's a way for you to create reports on the work items that you have in your boards. So you basically filter, create a view, and then you can connect Power BI to that view. And then you can see, for example, in here they have several views created. And then when you connect Power BI to the views, then you can pick all that data that is in there and you can create dashboards for your teams, for management or whatever, to see that in a more easy, consumable way. So that's the advantage of the analytics view. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot show it because it's not available to me, but the documentation is here. If you wanna use it, you can feel free to come here into the Azure DevOps documentation and follow the guides and the recommendations that they have here. So that's basically it for the uh, Azure DevOps boards. We've covered all the sections that we have available here. So this is gonna be it for the section number one of the course. On the next section, we're gonna be starting to talk about the Azure repos. And the Azure repos also has different things that we need to cover. So we're gonna get in depth into that. And I hope you're liking this uh, series. Remember, if you like the content, like and subscribe to the channel. Share the videos if you, if you find them useful for, for other people that want to learn about this. And remember, you always have the option to write in the comment section below to let me know what kind of things you would like to see featured in the channel. I always look at the comments. I try to respond to you every week, at least once a week. 
and uh, I look at your recommendations. I, if I find them to be useful, if I find them to be worth the effort, I put them in the queue, and I'll let you know. In the case that it it, it doesn't make it to the queue for some reason, I'll also let you know. So you always have some sort of input from me on your request. And also remember, if you want to support me to continue making this type of content, there are links in the description below where you can donate through PayPal or Bitcoin, and that'll really help me out to focus on the channel and giving you quality content that you want to consume. So thank you very, very much. See you in the next one.